when I arrived and they said there was something in my bag, I was mad at them and I was like, what do you mean there's something in my bag? But they were like, yeah, you just follow us. We went somewhere into a room yeah. where they opened the bag, they used some tools and opened the bag mm -hmm. and under the bag, like the suitcase, there was an envelope, oh. big one like this, full of some brownish stuff. I thought, since I'm innocent, it will still, like, this will still die, yes. right? So at a point I was relaxed until I went to the detention place where and it was really bad. It was just a piece of mattress. The washrooms were so black. The mosquitoes were just feasting on me. A lawyer comes and tells you they want $20,000 from you. Yeah, and assures me of my freedom, right? You can do anything for your freedom. I didn't even hear myself being convicted. I just saw that everybody was gloomy and my lawyer was like, okay, okay, now you've given her 10 years and was begging the, the judge to add my nine months into my, my, my sentence. Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of the vlog. My name is Indira Ganga and today I bring you another episode of Diaspora Stories, of Diaspora Diaries. And today we, we add a new flair and a new twist to the conversation. So you know guys that people come to Ghana for different reasons. Some come to visit, come, some come to travel, some come to explore and in the quest to come to Ghana you have to go through the airport and border control and sometimes you're cleared, many of the times you're cleared and you start your trip, but sometimes the police stop you and uh, they search your bag. And sometimes whatever they find in your bag means that the trip that you're planned in Ghana or any part of the world is not going to be the same. Penina, a couple of years ago, about eight or nine years ago, planned a trip to Ghana but instead of ending up at her hotel room, she ended up in prison. And she's here to share with us her story with the hope that it can help an innocent person out there who might suffer the same misfortune that she suffered. Benina, hi, Mambo, how are you? Hello, poor, I'm fine. Welcome to the channel. Thank you very much. And also, thank you for talking to us because this is not like an easy thing to discuss because it's it's particularly in this part of the world where we, we live in, it's it's a traumatic thing to go to prison. Yeah. But also, again, we sort of make it look like a shameful thing to get arrested. Yet sometimes misfortune just befalls you. This is part of life, right? Yeah, it is. So um, introduce yourself, who you are, and uh, how you found yourself in Ghana. Or like you've just completed your prison sentence, so introduce yourself. Yeah, for those who know me, I think a few people know me mm -hmm. or knew me then. Uh, my name is Pelena, popularly known as Pesh, and I was traveling here and there. Yeah. So it got to this time that I was supposed to come to Ghana, and uh, I had some friends, and something happened. So okay. at the airport, my bags were searched, and there was some heroin in my bag. Okay. And um, yeah, I was taken to some. Like FBI was involved, uh, BNI, that was uh, something, something, something like their FBI, Ghana mm -hmm. FBI, I mean. And um, yeah, I ended up in court for nine months. I was trying to fight my case, but I lost it. Mm. I, I lost it and I was sentenced to 10 years mm. in prison. That was not that easy for me. Yeah. But as you know, all in the mind yes so anything that you want to be smooth it will like yeah. the way you want life to go that's how, how it goes it go. yeah but before we even get to the prison i'm interested in who you were before you were arrested because sometimes these major events erase who you were because now people just think you're a bad person you're a prisoner you had a life before this Talk yeah to us about that okay for those who knew me people called me different names but I was just that other girl that I was into fashion and whatever. You were a celebrity. Okay, I don't think I can say a celebrity because <laughs> uh -huh. I didn't see what I was being celebrated for. But uh -huh. yeah, I was known somehow. Some people knew me. I was hosting some events and stuff like that. I was doing videos, music and stuff, having fun, partying and traveling, mm -hmm. all those things. 
I want you to take me to the day that you were traveling in Ghana. It was supposed to be any other trip, right? Yes. So just walk me through you packing your bags and, and coming to Ghana. Okay. I was traveling and I had a friend that told me that I should just pass at their place, get some bag, then I would drop it to a friend here. Mm -hmm. And I searched the bag. I couldn't see anything, so I knew that the bag was clear. So when I arrived and they said there was something in my bag, I was mad at them and I was like, what do you mean there's something in my bag? But they were like, yeah, you just follow us. We went somewhere into a room yeah. where they opened the bag, they used some tools and opened the bag and under the bag, like the suitcase, there was an envelope, big one like this, full of some brownish stuff. Uh, and they did some tests and when they said that it was heroin, suspected to be heroin, it was taken to the drug board where they clarified that it was heroin. Then my case started as the court. But I wasn't an, I was uh, at BNI for seven days and I was taken to the prison, Sawam female prison. Okay. And yeah. you know, you know the funny thing is, I'm a Kenyan here and we have a group for Kenyans here, okay. right? Yeah. And all the time in the group, someone is always asking, who's going to Kenya? I have a small parcel. Or when you're in Kenya, someone is like, hmm. could you pick a, bring me Kenyan tea or something? So you was a good person, you'll go Just pick go it. And, pick the... and sometimes because these are people you might know, you mentioned they were your friends. Yeah. So you don't think that your friends could actually put you in yeah. danger. You always trust them. Yeah. So you're at the airport, you've been stopped, they're searching your bags, they're telling you it's positive for heroin. What is going through your mind? How are you no, feeling? I was like, okay, I should just start thinking about this, but I thought, I thought since I'm innocent, it will still, like, this will still die, yes. right? So at a point I was relaxed until I went to the detention place where and it was really bad. It was just a piece of mattress. The washrooms were so black. The mos mosquitoes were just feasting on me. It was bad. So that's when I realized, okay, I, I don't know if I'm gonna survive this. Then no one is speaking Swahili anywhere. Uh -huh. Yeah. There's none of the people that I know. I couldn't make a call. I was just there and, yeah. and, and I was devastated. Oh my goodness. That that must have been very, very difficult because for the first time you're you're you know being arrested at home is different. Yeah, it's different. Speak, I know that I'll just make language, like two, three body. calls and yes. they'll be like, Okay, okay, you can go. And you can even speak the same language, like yeah, you can oh, speak Swahili or oh. you see if this person speaks your mother tongue, yeah. you explain and even you know who to call. When what did you know who to call or where to how no, did you even begin Because asking even when I told them that I want to call the person that I'm coming to meet, they were like, no, you just wait, just wait. But apparently, the way I've been looking at things is like they wanted the person to know that I've been arrested okay. so that they will not arrest that person. Okay. Because, okay, because of the stories that I've heard, because I'm not the only person who was arrested with the drug people, like many people, when I went there, I met a few Kenyans, I think we were already like five or six that time. So I hear stories from different people and that's how I get to understand what happened. It's like they are supposed to, they know, the people that are arresting me already know that I'm coming with a drug. Okay. Apparently, it's like they work together with those drug so people. So they are waiting for you at yeah. the airport? I think so, something like that. It's not like, let me say apparently, because I can't yeah. really prove that. Um, so you you've been arrested you've been put in a detention center and and the reality sinks in that um i chances are high i will not i will not go home anytime so no i still thought that i was going home you still thought that well, you're going when home? i was taken to the prison one of the kenyan ladies was like oh see jali like after 21 days by that time we were being uh detained because of uh, Ebola. Okay. You are quarantined for uh, 21 days. Uh -huh. So after 21 days, you join us in the cells, you enjoy there, you watch TV, and, and I was like, this girl is crazy. How does she expect me to be here for 21 days? Yeah. But before I realized, I'm just taken like almost eight years. Yeah. So yeah. How, how did the process begin of now you knowing 
that this is something serious. I'm going to go to court. I'm going to have to fight it. How, how did that reality sink in and how then did you begin assembling like a team, for example, lawyers and just people to help you? Okay, I just told them that I, need, I needed a lawyer, like at the court. They mm -hmm. didn't have a problem with that. So okay. they got me a criminal, criminal lawyer who came and asked for some cash. I really paid. Okay, for me, so it might not be a lot of cash, money, but uh -huh. uh, it might be it might be less. But for me, it, it was a lot of money, uh -huh. uh, considering where I was by then. Uh -huh. I wasn't doing anything, and I was supposed to give twenty thousand US dollars. But I had to come up with that because I really needed my freedom. Twenty thousand so, dollars. Um, a lawyer comes and tells you they want twenty thousand dollars from you. Yeah, and that shows me of my freedom. Right, you can do anything for your freedom. You can, you really can. Because being in detention for even 24 hours is, is just a horrible thing. So I had to come up with that and did what I did. And you know, when you're supposed to go to court, you know that the next time I'm, I'm going, maybe something will happen. Maybe the next time I go, something will happen. So I kept on having that hope and it took me nine months of which it was it was okay because people spend three years and even after being sentenced, the three years that they've spent on remand is not counted into not their counted. sentence. So they start a phrase that was like they didn't do anything. Yeah. So I was lucky. But also my judge said that my nine months should be added. And yeah. there was also another problem that when my warrant came, it wasn't indicated. So they decided to start from the day that I was sentenced. So, like, I would have gone home, like, in April last year. Yeah. But I could it because of the nine months. So, how did the case proceedings go? How And, and it's a lot of legal stuff that I don't want to go into, but mm. I want to know how you were feeling, like, every time you went to court and sat there, and every time it sank in more and more, that this is my life now, and you're being labeled a drug trafficker, and in your heart you know that is not who you are. I go to court and the judge calls my case. A lawyer stands up and talks. The uh, prosecutor stands up and says his things. Then case adjourned. Another two weeks, another two weeks. But until the, the witnesses come, they give their lies. They say everything they wanted to say. Then at the end of it, I was the last person to talk. And I have to explain myself. But when I did it, most of the big lawyers were there and they were like, oh, they were telling my lawyer, oh, you did well. And my lawyer was like, I didn't coach her. So it gave me hope that, okay, I win this case. But here comes a uh, date of um, judgment. And the judge reads some positive things that make me feel, okay, oh, I'm winning this, I'm going home. And I didn't even hear myself being convicted. I just saw that everybody was doing me and my lawyer was like, okay, okay, now you've given her 10 years and was begging the, the judge to add my nine months into my, my, my sentence. And that's when I realized that I was sentenced. I was just numb. I, was, I just don't know what I would have done. But what I, like, I just cried, that's all. 10 years. I didn't hear the 10 years being pronounced. I don't know where I was. I don't know what happened. So what happened after that? Yeah, I just was there. I went back. Uh -huh. Told my friends that I was convicted. They were crying. I didn't cry again. And I decided to take it in good faith. I was like, okay, I know I'll do it. Because I had to to bring in my 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 religion and yeah. and my spiritual life like it was it was all about christ prayers my belief uh, making myself big inside and positive and knowing that i'll make it and that was it yeah so you're transferred from remand and you're taken to the prison now or no, you it's, are it's, it's your, in the remand? same institution okay. but different Rooms like you are from one room to the other. Okay. Cells. Uh -huh. You have cell one, cell two, cell three, cell four. Okay, so you begin serving your term. How, yeah. how how was that? How was that? How was <laughs> it being in prison and knowing that for the next ten years this is my life? Okay, putting on the uniform 
okay in remind you don't put on uniform but when you're sentenced putting on the uniform blue and white was like okay so here comes me i have to start this and uh what was the other question just how was life now you put yeah in uniform, uh -huh. then day? it like, was, like, was like i was like okay so 10 years i know that 10 years i have to spend two thirds of the 10 years which is six years eight months from that day so i was like six years eight months that would be 2022 no this is the end of the world for me which so, year was that when you were doing that calculation that was 2016 so i called my mom and i told her mom i'm serving 10 years and she was like oh my god by the time you come then maybe we are all dead and i was like no one is gonna die you are going to be here. Yeah. Be there how, 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 how did they take it? Because I know, even for me, who I'm just like living in a foreign country, it's so difficult for my parents because they miss you. And they, how, how did they take it? And how did you feel first breaking the news to them? Was it difficult? And how did they take At it? At first, I hid it from everyone. My sister knew it, but I told her not to tell my parents. But I later realized that they're like, because my mom used to call me every morning, Kelly Tukakwa, how did you wake up? How are you? Good morning. In the morning, in the evening. But this is a time that has come and she can't call me. She couldn't call me. She doesn't know what is happening with me. Because I had told her that I'm going to Ghana. And she didn't hear from me again. So she was sick, like she was sick because of me. So I decided to tell her the truth. So I called her myself and told her what had happened. And uh, I knew that they were going to be mad at me, but they forgave me. So we used to write letters to each other. That time, the making calls were not common like today. But with time and praying for me and blah, blah, talking, she was OK. And I assured them that the place was OK. Because the, the situation inside, like the environment is not that bad, not okay. what people think. It's not like the male side, because male side is fine. It's rough. It's rough. It's really rough. The place is OK. No one tortures you, but you know, being a foreigner, they will always tag you a foreigner. They will just say things to you. And it makes you also feel I'm not at home. It makes you feel I'm not at home. But I just took it like that. You have to endure everything. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Um, how, how did you survive in there? You've mentioned religion. Did you make friends? Did you begin taking courses, studying? So when you get out, you oh, have something? Oh, I forgot. Like, I would have brought my certificates. I got, like, 10 certificates in there. Good I've learned almost everything. Yeah, I did millinery. I did theater arts. I did, what else? IT. I did so many things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I studied entrepreneur, a lot of things, Bible school. Yeah. Did that yeah. help you? Did that help keep you distracted or keep your days busy? Yeah, I, I always kept myself busy doing something. I always did something. When I'm not doing anything, I'll just go and be designing my stuff, making cards, making anything, designing anything. Okay. So I kept myself busy. Mm -hmm. Um now you're working towards the end of your sentence. How did it feel? one year which first of all which was the hardest year when was it what was the hardest period in prison the hardest period was my last six months oh yes. and one might think your first year might have been no. the hardest year the last six months the anxiety like okay i'm tired i really want to go home i i want to have my phone i want to do things on my own because can you imagine any time i'm getting out of the gate officers must be behind me in fact i can't get out of the gate before an officer an officer has to go out stand stand there wait for me to come out then be at my back as i'm going anywhere we are going because okay we go out okay in fact i forgot to tell you that i'm studying i'm doing become management four years program congratulations thank you with university of cape coast uh -huh. so i'm currently writing my second year's final exam okay yeah so we used to go there, officers take us there, then bring us back and blah, blah. Escort here and there. You don't do things the way you want. Your time is managed. They have to tell you what time to eat, what time to go and sleep. But okay, and there was me. My, my, my worst day was the first day that I was locked inside. And, you know, they locked from outside. Someone has locked you and they've gone out. What if something happened? 
there's a time a fan, a fan like fan caught fire in one of the cells and everybody was screaming it wasn't myself but like i almost died like i don't know i don't know i imagined that the fire would just come to a place and it wasn't like it, i cried and everybody cried it was, it was bad yeah so here is a time that i'm thinking now I'll be holding the key to my door, maybe some, I, like, we don't hold keys. We can't hold a key. It's an offense. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, the places to go, how will it be, like, yeah. Yeah. So, I was thinking. I was how, thinking. So, the, 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 the final day, your last day in prison, talk to us about that. Wow, 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 wow. We are supposed to get out at six o'clock. That's when they open us. But those who cook in the kitchen get out at uh, five o'clock. So I didn't sleep that night. So I waited when it was five. I got out with the <laughs> with them, and nobody realized that. So I went to the. We have a. They call it bathhouse, a place where we bath. It's an open one. I took my shower. And I packed a little things that were left because I had already packed the rest of the things that I've been buying and keeping for myself. So I'm supposed to be released at nine o'clock. So before nine, I was just there. You people should just release me. I want to go. And we're like, you're crazy. Wait for your time. So I was like, and she as I was sitting there. You have to be dressed in your uniform before you can change to your your your, your normal clothes. So I was there. And they told me to thumb print. We use thumb prints, we don't sign. So I thumb printed and I was like, okay, discharged. You have to be taken to other offices. Then when I had changed, I wore my heel. Like, I think I have got those pictures. I will see, I'll, sh I'll show them to you later. So, and here comes me with my wig and makeup and I'm fully changed like a different person and they all all the people like the whole yard was screaming everybody was screaming and crying oh. and I was also crying yeah and I was tense I felt I was like okay I'm scared I don't know why I was scared so I was taken to the senior most officer and she was like you take care and I was like, I'm scared, I'm scared. I started crying and I was crying. I couldn't even walk with my health. So I went downstairs. At the gate, one of my Kenyan sisters was there. She helped me. They have to search your bag again when you're going out. So she helped me to search the bag, close it back and take it out. Then the moment I just got my leg out, out of the gate, the gate, it's not like... You have to bend. They say you have to respect, so you bend. It's, it's short. You have to bend, and I bend. Here comes me, free again, and I was scared. I was looking side by side, like, is anyone with me? I'm like, no. And one of the officers was like, Pesh, you are free. You are free, walk. And my, one of my brothers, my brother from another mother had come to pick me. Yeah. And my sister also had come to pick me, and I was, they were like, okay. Is this you? Is this you? Like yeah. they didn't like I was a different person. Yeah. And I was I was just crying. I didn't believe that that day has come because it always looked like a dream in in me. Everybody was like, okay, no, before that day, like when to one month. So how are you feeling? And I'm like, no, I'm not feeling anything because mm -hmm. I don't think anything is happening. Yeah. Like I was okay. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not feeling anything. Mm -hmm. So the day has come and I'm feeling like confused. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, how has life been outside? After the release? Yes. Okay. My friend has taken me in with her. Uh -huh. She's a good person, so, but she's trying to show me places. Yeah. We've gone here. We went to the beach, took pictures. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, I, 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 I still feel somehow. Yeah. Like, um, I don't know, like I don't do things the way I think I should be doing. Okay. Sometimes I find myself slow or yeah. forgetting things. I think I've not come to terms with uh, the real world again. Yeah. Yeah. How has the world changed? 2016 when you left and when you came back, how has it changed? I can't really tell that much. But oh, because you left in Kenya, yes. so you have to go back and I have see. To go back and do you, are you? Are you excited to go back home? Yeah, I can't wait. What are you going to do when you get home? <laughs> 
I think I'm gonna get my motherland sand into my hands and smear it on my face because I really appreciated Kenya because of staying in Ghana. Yeah. I knew I valued my I now value my country. Yeah. I really value my country and my yeah. people. Yeah. Um what lesson from everything because um I believe in taking responsibility irrespective of how unfortunate the situation was and what happened to you. What what kind of lessons would you say you've learned from that experience with the Nigerians that tricked you that led up to this moment? Everyone has to be careful. You have to know what what the people close to you do and uh, if someone tells you take this you have to know what it is be careful and yeah. the present like i'm sending you a present someone might tell you take this present you go and receive the parcel by the time you open it something else maybe the parcel was being followed by some uh, uh interpol or something like yeah. that yeah yeah Interesting. Um, would you say you've forgiven them or you've left it to the Lord? Vengeance is for the Lord. Actually, I don't know what I feel in my heart because you have to forgive everyone. You have to forgive everyone so that you can be forgiven too. And um, yeah, you understand things happen. So, you know, nothing happens without a reason. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I take things. I let life flow the way it wants to because. One last question I would ask is, what do you feel like these 10 years have taken away from you? Maybe would you be having a family? Maybe where would do you think your life would have been if it wasn't for these 10 years in prison? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what, what would have happened because I really had bigger plans. And I think it was for a change of my life for me to direct my life into a different direction. So yeah. Especially... Uh, I don't. Okay, let's leave that. Yeah. But I think I think I've lost. Time is never recovered. I know, but due to my Christianity belief, I believe that I will recover whatever I've lost. Yeah, amen. Because the that. Bible says so. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if if anybody is watching this and obviously they'd like to support you in any small way. How can they support you and what will you channel the support into? What do you want to do? Is it, do you want to go home or is it that you want to put some funds aside and start something because you're in school and you've gotten so many courses that you're studying and you have skills that you could put into great use? You know, about my studies, I'm even confused because I'm supposed to finish by 2024 mm -hmm. and that means I should be here. Or otherwise, I should um, change my course to e-learning. Okay. Then I'll do that in Kenya. So I was thinking, get, I have to get something going. Okay. And I don't want to involve myself in some stuff. Maybe I can't. I don't even think that I'll go back to what I was doing before. Yeah. Because time is gone. There are a lot of changes in me, in my mind, in my life. I don't know. Yeah, I think. I just want to start from somewhere. Okay. Guys, so if you're watching this and you would like to support her, she's planning to go home to see her mom. Obviously, she's from prison and, um, you know, all those years she spent working and serving her sentence. So if anything small can be directed maybe to her ticket. And also, if you feel a little bit generous, she has skills that she has learned from school and she would like to start a business so that she can be stable and steady like you had her say what she was doing 10 years ago is not viable now she was a fashion blogger um a model a stylist a video fixer but obviously her life has changed the trajectory of her life has changed and she'd like to start something that is more sustainable so whatever it is no matter how small 10 cities one dollar a hundred a thousand Whatever it is you feel in your heart, I would just like request as a New Year gift. It's very hard to meet people who, once something unfortunate happens to them, they keep a positive mind and also take accountability despite the fact that they were not complicit in the situation. So whatever it is that you can give, we'll appreciate. Um, the number has been on the screen all this while. And also I'll leave the number um, in the description box. So that if anybody wants to send you something, you have Momo? 
Yes, please. Yes, yes, Momo. And to the guys who are abroad, I think there's a way you can still work with Momo or I'll attach my paper and whatever it is that you send, we'll, 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 we'll give it to her. Finally, guys, when you're traveling, I remember the first time I was going to China, my dad said, do not take anything from anyone. Yeah. Guard your bag. No ready. one should tell you, take care of my bag. Yeah. Oh, some people might feel like, okay, I'm being followed. So I will leave this one for her. Okay. Take care of my bag. I'm coming. I'm going to the washroom and the person will disappear. And then they catch you with yeah. the bag. Yeah. And, and and you see, these are things that we continue to learn particularly. And it doesn't matter if you're a first-time traveler. I've traveled so much, but I didn't know that trick that they say, take care of my bag. And out of the kindness of your heart, you just say, okay, I'm going to watch it. Probably they've gone to grab a snack. And then you're arrested. So these things happen. Be careful out there. Be kind to people. And your support towards her will be really, really appreciated. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.